I commanded thee this day, shall you observe to do that ye may live and do what? Multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers. And thou shalt do what? Remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these forty years in the wilderness to humble thee. I want to pause right there. Many Christians are in trouble today because they don't remember where they're coming from. You see them in church now that God has blessed them and they behave as if they've always been that. They behave as if they've never slept on the floor. They behave as if they've never been hungry. They behave as if they've never been without a job. They behave as if God hasn't done anything for them. The Bible says, God says, we should never, ever forget where God has led us from. Amen. Amen. Says the Bible, let us, God led us that way so that he could do what? Humble us. And to prove us, to know what was in our heart. Whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. And listen to what verse 3 says. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger, and then he fed thee with manna, which thou knowest not, neither did thy fathers know. And here's the clincher. He did that, that you may know that man doth not do what? Live, Live by bread only, but by what? Every word. Every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. You wonder where did Jesus the word from the fight the devil, he got it from Deuteronomy. And there God is saying, when you look back and remember where God has led you from, you understand that it is not your education that keeps you in life. It is not your job that's the most important thing. It's not even your health. It is the fact that God spoke a word in your life. You are living because God is on your side. Amen. You are where you are because God has blessed you. The Bible says when we remember, memorials lead us to testify. I'm going to say something right now. And if you're upset, I don't care. Turn to your neighbor and say, the pastor doesn't care if you're upset right now. <laughs> I hate it when I go to church and I, we, we have a testimony service, a testimony session, and everybody sits down looking at the other person as if God is In order for us to testify of what God has done for us, we have to go back and tell people where we're coming from and tell people that we weren't always this rich. We weren't always this bright. We weren't always this fat. We didn't always have this much weight. Hmm, mercy. Have you ever seen my pictures? I'm going to show it in church one day. Just to show you where the Lord has brought me from. So you can rejoice with me. So when I praise the Lord, you don't think that I'm crazy because I remember the days. The Bible says it's important for us to remember so that we know that it is not us who are keeping ourselves alive. Word. And many of us cannot testify because we have forgotten. Mm, mercy. Somebody say, pick up, pick up the pieces. Pick up the pieces. Pick up the pieces. Pick up the pieces. 
That's the first thing. A memorial leads us to testify. The second thing, Joshua, what book did I say? Joshua. Genesis, Exodus, Lucas, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, the very next book. Joshua chapter 4. What chapter did I say? Chapter 4. Verse 4 through 6. And I'm telling you this right now. So that as the Lord blesses you, you keep something to remind you of God's blessing. Amen. You're going to be a great church one day. Are you hearing me tonight? Amen. And you know, nobody will remember poor little Pastor Brian. Listen, what was the name of that little man there? Yes, man, that Jamaican guy. Can't remember his name. That he had nothing to remind you of, of poor little Pastor Brian, huh? Said, so what was the name of that couple who used to sing, man? Yeah, they were from Tonga. And they had this little kid, and he was so active. Active, you know, active. Cold word, active. And they have nothing to remember. So what was what was the name of that young lady who always organized things and she had a husband and he had long hair, lots, <laughs> like he was from Jamaica, but he never spoke Jamaica. <laughs> I don't remember a thing. So what was the name of that young man? And he was married to this other young lady and they had a lot of kids. And one of them became a fashion designer. We, we don't remember nothing. Are you hearing me tonight? The Bible says, before you get to the promised land, I'm reading verse 4 of chapter 4 of Joshua. The book of Joshua. What book am I in? Joshua. Joshua chapter 4. Go read it tonight. Write it down and read it. The Bible says, God says to Joshua, call 12 men whom you have prepared of the children of Israel, one man for each tribe. And then Joshua said, pass over before the ark of the Lord your God of Jordan, and take ye up every man of you a stone upon his shoulder, according unto the number of the tribes of the children of Israel, that this may be a sign among you. And here it is now. Catch this. Catch this. This is, this is deep. If you get this, you will be a great church. Not just for this generation, but for the next generation and the generation after that. God says the first reason you, you keep a memorial is so that you can testify. And when you speak, people don't think man is lying. Because you have proof, you have the pictures. Amen? Amen? That's the first reason, so that you can testify. But the second reason is just as important. The second reason is so that you can teach. Problems why we can't teach our kids nothing about the Lord is we have nothing to point to. Hmm. See, the Bible says it's not enough to keep telling your kids about Jesus. Are you hearing me tonight? If you keep telling them and telling them and telling them, after a while they think that you're not so what does scripture say you ought to do are you hearing me parents listen to me tonight what does scripture say you ought to do scripture says you should set up some memorials in your house you should have things there that remind them hey when you were born there was a storm going on
Don't you know it's more powerful to answer a question than to give an answer to a question that was never asked? You have to get your kids into a situation where they are asking the questions. And you are giving the answer. You can say, well, let me tell you the story. Let me tell you where God has brought us from. Let me tell you about this situation and how God brought us through. And, and then they will know that God is real. The Bible says you ought to remember so that you can testify. But you ought to remember also so that you can teach. That's right. That's reason number two. See, the stone and the manna probably doesn't have any value on the open market. You won't be able to sell these stones for $2.335 million. You won't be able to get even a thousand dollars for the manna. But with the stone and with the manna, you can testify of God's goodness. And you can teach your children about what God has done for you. Amen? Amen. And isn't that more valuable than money? Amen. Because the Bible says, what shall it profit a man that he may gain the whole world and lose his soul? Many of our parents today, they're getting gray hairs. They have money. Their retirement is set. But their children are not in the church of God. And as long as their children So that you can testify and you can teach your children. You don't have to nag them, amen? Come on, now, how many of you kids have kind of given you the eye? I know they're not brave enough to tell you that you're nagging them, but they give you the eye. Look. They look. They gave you the look. How many of us have given the look? <laughs> But I want to hasten on tonight because that's not what I came here for. See, the Bible says Jesus, skipping back to John chapter 6, Jesus in John chapter 6 performed a miracle. And as I've been saying all night, God is obsessed with